For those who may not know me, my name is Tom Vickers, and I'm the president of the Georgia Historical Society. And before we get into our program tonight, uh, I'd like to make a couple of announcements. It, it's great to see a large group, because the board of directors spends a lot of time on these programs. And we have two more programs coming up, one in August and one in September, which I want to encourage you to kidnap neighbors, young adults, anybody, and bring them. The August program is going to be about um, the, the history um, of the Abernathy Indians and their culture. And as you know, that's very uh, important to this particular area of where we have. And then we have an interesting one in September. September is Archaeology Month, and so there's a program that's going to be offered, and it's run by the Department of Transportation. And what it's about is they have the ability to look up below ground from above ground and determine what's there, if there's an old cellar basement or something else. And they're going to talk about that program and show us what it does in Vermont. We will also have a program in October. Um, we're hoping that the program will deal with the plants and animals unique to Georgia, Vermont. And we're working on putting that together. But we still have some folks to do that. Before we get right into the program, um, I'm going to turn it over in a few minutes to our vice president. And the reason is that is yeah, I'm very pleased to serve on the board of the Georgia <coughs> Society. But the past month, I've had some family illness, and so I've been MIA from the board. And what's nice is when you can be MIA and you have a great team of folks on the board who put this program together, particularly under the leadership, even a last-minute meeting in the basement of the town hall I read about in the minutes. So I'm going to turn the program over for further reductions to Cindy Cliff, our Vice President. Now it was all decided that Sarah was going to do this, and he's been giving me the eye that I was going to, so this is a surprise. <laughs> Anyways, it is an honor, and we need to speak loudly for Peter, and um, let him know how much we appreciate all that he has done for Georgia. He's going to tell us, I think, some stories that, I, I think the word was myth that I heard, and I really don't know what he is speaking of. But if you look around at the number of books that Peter has written, uh, researched, taken pictures, uh, recorded, everything about the people and places of this town. I don't think there's another town anywhere around this community, statewide, I'm not even sure nationwide that there's anybody that has loved the town of Georgia as much as Peter Millett. And he's not a born native uh, Vermonter, but he loves and adopted the town of Georgia. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the things he's done for this town. But Peter, everybody wants to meet you and hear what you have to tell us tonight. Would you come up and tell us what you, your story is tonight? Are you, would you like a chair or would you like to... Tell me your name. Well, see Will, I don't hear Will, I still walk all right. <laughs> well, listen. Uh, if you haven't seen this article, uh, get it. Uh, it, it. It was in Vermont Life, and it's the story of the 150-year-old church. That how many of you saw a fern? Oh, what, what church, Peter? It, it, it burned fifty. Uh, in uh, 1950, they burned to the ground. The only thing that was left was the uh, bill. And I hate to tell you the secret, but the bill is in the town clerk's office. How many of you have noticed it? Well, good for you. Well, listen, this article is uh, from Vermont Life, and it tells about the church in uh, Georgia and that was still uh, there before it burned up. Uh, Floyd Brooks was there. Uh, some people named Cohen uh, went up and down the road 
1951, when they think the Grange uh, uh, somehow got involved and got it ignited. And this is a, a, an example of the article that I have. I have the original also, but I have this. Mark, where is it? Where did we put it? Mark, Mark here? He's sitting out there. He would just <laughs> Okay. What was it? Ask him again, Peter. He's out there right now. Mark is? Yeah. No. Well, uh, I have a copy of it. I have the original copy. And if you people, uh, how many of you go to Donna Howard's bookstore? Okay. Uh, you, you pester her and you say, uh, 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 do you have the original article of the magazine before it was uh, burned up with the rest of rest of George part of Georgia when when uh, 1950 that's the day to remember because I'm, I ran I ran a uh, Gertrude Newton any of you know do Gertrude Newton well anyway she uh, she was cooked, she lived next to Ethan and other Newtons and uh, the, she ran to the house where we used to live for 20 years and uh, she said the, there's, there's a fire at the church and uh, so I went to the fire um, it was a little past the church and it, the picture is with right a broom yeah. and a pail Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a waste of time. <laughs> By that time, uh, this Cohen, he was a, Cohen was a, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, but anyway, he went up and down the road and uh, blowing the horn, but it did no good. It went, everything went. That's the picture of the town hall on the town yes. history, right, Peter? Yeah. Yeah. That's, right. That's yeah. the yes. pictures on the town yeah. history, yeah. okay, of the town hall. Good. That's right. Mm -hmm. And on the, in the town clerk's office now, is a picture, a, a painting by a man named Gillespie. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he was a railroad man. And the original painting is, it, it, if you go to the town clerk's office, there's a picture of it there. A magnificent picture. Well, it's in the town, uh, in the book, too, the two volumes. Uh, you know, the, 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 where is Edmund Wilcox? Me. 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 Well, uh, I, I turned. I turned to Edmund Wilcox, or, or Edmund turned to me and said, how many books should we publish? I don't know. That well, was the <laughs> foolish thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, either Edmund or me uh, said two, uh, 200. You know, you can't get it, the book anywhere. And I keep pestering the, the um, Donna Howard at the bookstore in um, St. Albans. St. Albans. Yeah. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, St. Albans. Which book are you looking for? The History of, the, of Georgia? Yeah. That's the one you're looking for? Okay. Uh, and the. the and we only How many do we have left? I don't know. Not, not, not many. many. Not many. Uh, but it, the, 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 the thing that's most exciting about, I shouldn't keep them talking, but uh, anyway, uh, now I've forgotten what I was going to say. <laughs> anyway, uh, we, do, we do have. There are a few co copies. How many have the two?
to Williams that good for you. Be careful. Hang on. <laughs> Tom Vickers here? Yes, right here. Where? Right here. Right Where are you hiding? Right over here, Peter. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, he, he's the one that alerted me to this meeting. He said, uh, I've got one of these set, and uh, he doesn't let it go very far. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. But uh, copy, this you can get, and that's a copy of the church uh, picture of the, uh, it used to have Tommy Ellis's eighth uh, school uh, in the back of it, uh, not before it burned. How many of you remember Tommy Ellis? Uh, he was a popular teacher in Los Angeles. Connie Cleveland was her name. And she had the back room of this church that burned to the ground. Uh, and so everything there. Now, there's one other thing that I should mention, and then, then I'll. I should shut up for a while. And that is that, uh, <laughs> if I can remember what, to, what I was trying to think. You want a chair, Peter? Uh, no. No. Cut me off that fast. No, I forgot. I forget. Uh, I, I don't see well, and I don't. Uh, I think Connie Ellis. I don't uh, remember well. Um, but the, 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 one of the things we we have and it's still here, and that's in the live, uh, in the library. You can find uh, books that we have published, uh, uh, reminiscing about uh, town, the town of Georgia, because it's. Uh, we had this man named Newton. There were Newtons all over. <laughs> <laughs> and he was very good at writing stories. And uh, he since died, and he had moved to Arizona, I think. Anyone want to know what the temperature is in Arizona today? You don't want to know. <laughs> uh, but uh, another, one other person who I should mention, uh, who was in, who pestered me, or I pestered him, uh, as much as anybody, and that's Edmund Wilcox. <laughs> and he was involved in lots of things. But I don't want to keep going on. Yes. Uh, I oh, could. Yes. I could yes. keep yes. going on. Yes. Believe me, yes. because I have many, many memories. I know you do. <laughs> many memories of the, that town of Georgia, where I lived. Rebecca, oh, excuse me. Uh, Rebecca, where are you? I'm right here. All right. How, how, many, how, how many years have you lived in Georgia? Yes. We lived in Georgia for five years, twenty years on Route 7, and um, the, the, the rest of it in, um, on the middle road. And it, it just, well, I loved it, and uh, uh, you people should love it. Thank you. <laughs> I helped you write a number of the history books. 
Whoa. Against my will. <laughs> I was I was recruited to do that by you. Oh. <laughs> and so each time I did, I tried to take the easiest possible job that I could find. When we did the military history, I took the Spanish-American War. <laughs> there can't possibly be anything. Right? Well, we set a deadline, and every day, every day, I would get home from work, change my clothes, go out in the yard to get some exercise and do some work, and I swear I was under surveillance. <laughs> because that stupid little Subaru would pull out <laughs> and bow-legged Peter would come sliding up my driveway. Ed, Ed, I think I found something for you. <laughs> Every day. And so I got in the habit of parking my car behind bushes. <laughs> and then when I wanted to go inside, I would belly crawl. So that should Peter do a drive-by, he wouldn't see me. It never, ever worked. <laughs> And the thing about Peter, you know, the reason that all of these books, all of these works, all of this wondrous stuff got completed, he is the man who would not say no. He would not accept no. He came up my driveway once. It was, pro it was a weekend, so it was probably the third time that day. And I was so fed up. I said, Peter, if you come back, I am going to throw you in that tree, and I am not coming up for you. Wow. And he listened to me vent, he stared at me, and then there was silence, and then he said, so Ed, I think I have this thing on the Spanish American. <laughs> So meanwhile, I had just read the life of an 83-year-old man, and he's not going to be deterred by God. He's going to get his Spanish-American war out of me. And by, th by thought, he guided me through the file cabinet here in the back of the library. He did not come with me. He said, cabinet on the right, bottom shelf, way in the back. Damn. I was thinking, boy, that's not going to be easy at all. But if we've ever had a treasure, this is somebody who understood people aren't always eager learners. Sometimes we are reluctant learners. But Peter did not care, does not care. You will learn in spite of yourself. And I learned a lot working with him. And I appreciate it. Well, thank you for, for your kind words. <laughs>
there is no mystery. From head to toe is his love for history. From garage sales are cemeteries and senior Christmas dinners, Georgia barns and postcards, we are all the winners. For Peter's dedication, with Francis at his side, gave more to this town with improved sense of pride. For military, families, antiques, and more, Gordon's Mill, Bird's Counts of Georgia, one-room schools to restore. Georgia Town Beach and Maps, George, uh, Town History Books galore, phone directories, public library, town yard sales, and more. Historical Society, Memorial Parades, Town Hall Bell Tower to be seen. He even helped to obtain our Civil War cannon on the green. When there's projects to do, Peter knocks on your door. If you dare to be home, you say, no, Peter, no more. <laughs> but before you know it, there's fun from the start. We thank you, Peter, from the bottom of our hearts. Yeah. And I'm going to tell a couple of things that I remember about Peter. He was a very good neighbor. And we used to do the bird counts for the Audubon Society together for many years. And then Peter decided he'd had enough of the correlating of everything and decided that I should take it over. So I did, and I am still enjoying doing it. And it's been a wonderful thing. And I also remember that when we had yard sales, Peter and Francis always dug up lots of flowers out of their garden. And I think many of us in the town of Georgia are still enjoying the blooms. So I definitely have enjoyed those. And he also, before he left, gave me a beautiful blanket chest that I still enjoy. I have lots of many memories of Peter, and they're all wonderful. And I'm sure everybody else does too. And we're going to share some of those with you. Thank you all for coming. Well, we all have stories about Peter. The first thing I know is you don't want to be home on Wednesdays. That's the day that Peter would go to Hannaford's and stop by on his way out or his way back with a new idea or some new project that he thought the Historic Society would take on. When I first met Peter, it was at the bird count. He came up to the farm and said, we're doing a bird count, would you like to join? I said, Peter, I, you know, maybe a robin and a blue jay, I don't know the rest of them. He said, can you cook? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, there's two roles. Some of us go out and count the birds. Others prepare meals. We start with breakfast at my house, and then we go to Fran Moses for lunch. So you can prepare soup and something for lunch. So that's what I did for several years, and that was my first contact with Peter. I should have been aware. <laughs> that was just the beginning of Peter. And so the next contact is when he said, well, do you like history? And I go, well, yeah. I was a history major in college. One of those guys that graduated in the 70s with a major in history that was not employable under any circumstances. <laughs> I did okay. And he said, well, I'd like you to consider, he didn't say I'd like you to consider, I'm going to nominate you to be a director of the Georgia Historical Society. And so I ended up joining the Historical Society and long behold, have been president of the society for quite a few years. And Peter was always instrumental, as you'll see with some of the other things. But when I think about Peter and what Peter did for this community, it goes beyond the Historical Society. He did something which today is very rare, and that's community service. Whether it was the bird count, you know, whether it was the parade, whether it was the Historical Society, whether it was something to do with anything in this community, he was instrumental in going around and identifying not only the folks who have lived here their whole life, but those of us who have lived here less than our whole life and got us involved in some part of community activity. And you never could say no to Peter. <laughs> the word no never happened. I can't tell you how many times I went back in the kitchen door and said, why didn't I say no? Like, yeah, yeah. but you know, what are you going to do when Peter's there and he's got a good cause and he knows he's asking to do something you have an interest in that serves your community? And that's a role which the younger generation today, I think, in all communities, 
not just in Georgia, but in all of them, we're having trouble filling positions on various boards and activities. We need to get more people involved. And Peter was instrumental in getting a lot of us here tonight involved. So for that, Peter, I say thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to you about something because Peter, um, he, he somehow found out that I did artwork and so he came to see me about illustrations and the town history books and that was terrific. But then he said to me, you know we really need a welcome sign to Georgia. We need a sign that says thank you for coming, do it. And I thought to myself, I hate painting signs. I've always told everybody I hate painting signs. So after I made two five-foot signs welcoming everybody to Georgia and saying thank you for coming, then he had me paint, I think, nine cemetery signs. <laughs> How is it? How is it? <laughs> you just can't say no like everyone else has said here. And it's always amazing because when everyone talks about it, they all say the same thing. That he was a doer and a shaker, and when he came, you did. There was just no, no saying no. So I thank you for that because I grew from doing those signs. But to this day, if anybody asks me to paint a sign, I say no. I don't paint signs. <laughs> Peter Ed Brio. <coughs> Peter came to me about 25 years ago and he said, I want you to join the Historical Society. <laughs> he knew that I had taught history, that I would like doing that. And so I said, yeah, uh, I guess I will. And he said, I'm going to assign you the cemetery. <laughs> and I said, well, what am I going to do? He said, oh, there's nothing to it. <laughs> you won't have to worry at all. All you got to do is walk around, take a look, and, and make decisions. <laughs> well, we, we're now on our second set of, of, of post, uh, post and fencing. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's so long now, I forgot when we started. Uh, and it's, it's, it's the same old story we've been hearing right along. You don't say no. Kim, <laughs> did you want to share? Kim? Well, Ed sort of covered for our family. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Olive, did you want to share? Yeah. <laughs> Is this all? Yeah, let's <laughs> see you. Oh, yeah. I hope people, I don't see Will, I don't I hear know. Will. Yeah, I miss your visit. You gotta stop at the house. But all of you're that I enjoy a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Said, 
What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Remember that? No. <laughs> so anyways, I ended up chairing that committee to, to put a veterans monument. And then Peter said, you know, we need a book to this. So we started this thing and I uh, chaired the committee to get the book written. And I told Peter, I said, Peter, I don't have time. He said, two hours a day. Every morning, two hours a day, write that book, take all the input. And so that's what I did on this. Two hours a day, every day. Well, six months later, we had a book. So, and then one other time, he says, we need a sign down at Gordon's Mill. And I said, Peter, where are we going to get a sign? He says, I've got one. Remember what I'm, what about the sign down at Gordon's Mill? So I go down and he said, come on down, I'll show you. I've already got it started. I go down there and there's this 20-foot sign that said, Alexander's Drugstore. <laughs> from Alexander's drugstore to Gordon's Mill. He said, you figure it out, you go to the shop. <laughs> so we ended up changing that sign over to from uh, Alexander's drugstore to uh, Gordon's Mill. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on. This guy has kept me in trouble for 30 years, but uh, and projects after project. But I do appreciate it, and... Peter has done probably more for the history of the town of Georgia than any person that's here in this room or ever has a life. So, again, Peter, thank you very much. And, uh, Colin, you know, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need any more projects. <laughs> I'm going to turn it around a little bit and say um, what I learned from you. Number one, don't buy a maple sugar house. Maple, uh, he wanted to buy a, a sugar shack. He wanted to, us to buy a barn somewhere. And he wanted us to convert another property for the historical society. But th that just fell, fell through. And I was kind of glad because I didn't want to be cleaning out those barns, cleaning out the... <laughs> The sugar shack and doing all of that but I guess what I I will say is that I learned to manage my time I wished I had your vision I wished I had your energy people think I have a lot of energy but I don't compare it to you and Francis but um, you had a big heart you were extremely generous I don't know if all of you know the genealogy work that he did and People would pay him. People would give him a donation, $35, $50. Well, as the treasurer, I knew where the money came from. It came from Peter's hard work, not from mine. And he would always give me credit for building up the, you know, the um, pot in the bank. But the truth of the matter was it was Francis and Peter's generosity in more ways than you can believe, that's for sure. You were uh, an inspiration to me, for sure, and your lovely wife, uh, Frances, will never be forgotten, that's for sure. You know what makes me... <laughs> what makes me sad... Time for cover. <laughs> uh, is that... that um, the barns that disappear. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, I went across one, and it, it's gone forever. And I don't. It, you, you may not know which one I'm talking about, but in some cases you will remember the barn, and it's, there's no signs of it now. And uh, it, it's just a shame what happens to them. Oh, and one other thing. <laughs> one other thing. Um, I have in my hands uh, an article by, uh, written in Vermont Life 
on a, a two or three pages long, and it's of the town town hall that uh, burned after 150 years in Georgia. It burned up. Uh, how many of you re remember the town hall? Well, a few, a few, very few. Edmund, are you there? Uh, sure. Yes. <laughs> well, the Historical Society has a few other pieces from that town hall. We have some of the trim work, right? And part of the, the, bell, the, original, and the bell. original bell. That was Peter's idea of a committee to uh, get people to donate and put in, uh, you know, in memory for the rest of your lives, your name were going to be on a plaque that you donated to have this bell put up on the town, on the town hall. But that was one mistake we did make, Peter. We also bought that music uh, Caroline system that played on and on and on, and then we had to take that now. <laughs> but that was fun. Great. <laughs> This is an article. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Peter. Greg Drew. A uh, rather a late comer to the game here, but you had your effect on me too. Uh, I remember you. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd play an instrument. Yep. Wow. Yep. Oh, wow. Very well. But it, it's the the oracle about the town hall that was 150 years old. Thank you. Yep. And, and it burned up. Yep. <laughs> Back when I first came to town, which was not that long ago, I heard about the historical oh, really? society, and I wound up coming to a couple of meetings. And they needed volunteers to look at the museum. And had I known what I was getting into, I might have had a little more hesitation. But I dove in, and that was awesome. And I came across Peter's history of Georgia. And in the, even on the back dust jacket of it is a picture of a drum that says the Georgia Town Cornet Band. And it just so happens that when I came from Rhode Island, I played with a Civil War reenactment band that played at Gettysburg a number of times, playing music that the Georgia Town Band had played. We have in the collection in the back there that was put together with a lot of work from folks here, the minutes over a span of about 20 years that that band existed. And it lists one of the band books that we used to play out of. So with that inspiration, I jumped into the parade in my Civil War uniform, on a bicycle, playing a little recording thing that had a recording of our band, hoping to scare up some people that had instruments that would just get together and do whatever. Being in the parade, in an historic uniform, with an historic cause to be had, didn't go unnoticed. <laughs> I, I, I was done from then on. So, consequently, we tried to put that band together, and I am now on the board of the Georgia Historical Society. <laughs> so, there we go, Peter. Thank you. There's one other thing that most people won't recollect, but uh, all, all of us have heard of General George Stannard, yeah. right? Yeah. And his monument is on Main Street in um, Georgia. Uh, and I want to challenge to the crowd. 
I'm going to challenge you to name another Georgia general. Not Stannard. See if we can supply this. Dewey. Dewey. General Dewey. Peter. Colin said Dewey. General Dewey? Who? General Dewey? <laughs> you well. You challenged the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I remember, but I tried to forget. You did well. <laughs> now, 35 years ago, you heard I could take pictures, and you wanted a few pictures from me. So that's how I got started with you with the town pictures. Oh, my gosh. You name it, and I was on the go taking pictures. But there was other fun projects. One of them was Lost Colonies and Forgotten Places. Mm -hmm. If you were looking at the Beers map, there was a hell's year a hundred and some years ago. We've got to go find that foundation. So we were talking <laughs> through that, the weeds up the here and boots on, and I did pictures of foundations and dug wells. I remember Peter looking in the dug well, and there was a snake in there. Uh, How did anybody ever survive drinking this water? He said. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun. And another project that Peter started in 80 or 81 was uh, the senior Christmas dinners. There's a book right there with the first pictures that Peter took. And then he said to me, this is your game. From now on, it's yours. <laughs> so, Started in '81. I started in '82, and uh, I've got four photo albums full of pictures to, to, you know, to show who was here each year at the Christmas dinner. And it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of other projects that were. We'd be here for two hours tonight, but I got to sit down. I'm tired. <laughs> two other people here who have his name. Who knows it? I don't I know it now. <laughs> yes. 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 Are there any other directors that would like to share of previous directors of the historical society? Or anyone that's had any involvement with a right? So I've known Peter for a while. Peter's I'm Pat Burke. I remember I used to be your neighbor when you lived on Mill Road, and I lived over on Hotchkiss. I'm the guy with the, who did the roads, the ancient roads. Oh! <laughs> yes! So I'm you with Tony? Me and Tony? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you all, are you on the society? No, I'm not. <laughs> documenting every road that we could find in the town of Georgia. Ah, so we got one project left, which is to put everything together, and it's going to be in the library with the next I want to. But anyway, so, but the interesting thing is that all that time, Peter was not involved in the road project. There were other people who started out, and they all left after about two weeks. <laughs> because they were smart. And we, we Tony and I, weren't, didn't have Peter's glue, so they all left. But Tony and I, we kept at it, and we finished it. But over those six years, I cannot tell you how many times we talked about Peter Millet mm -hmm. and how we had to keep after this thing because Peter was going to see the map, and we had to go and show Peter the map because by this time he moved over to Cambridge, somewhere around 2010 or so. So, but we said, we got to do this thing because Peter's expecting us to finish, and we've got to keep going. So, but we didn't know, sitting in this room every Saturday morning, we were here for years. People were coming in, and like, what are those two guys doing here? And there are all this paper spread out on all the tables, and they were arguing. And they were arguing. <laughs> you know, we were always arguing about, we would take this, you would get this, um, out of the old records, and you would find this survey description. So we would argue about where the road went, we thought the road went. So this would go on for weeks and weeks. His wife almost divorced him, I think. <laughs> but, but all the time, 
there was this thing that Peter Millett was always in the background. So even though he wasn't on the project, he wasn't even living in town. It was just like he was Peter Millett's project, but we didn't really know that. So we finished it, Peter. So maybe when we get the last bit of it done, we'll dedicate it to you. Anyone else want to share? Madam President. Yes. I would like to uh, uh, congratulate uh, Peter and for the tremendous work he's done right to win in, in history. But the main thing is that he, he came in a, 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 as the a vice a, a, as a principal of BFA. He had the had the uh, idea of of printing the town history. Uh, and it worked out well, and, and it's, uh, it's really been a, a, a tremendous you know, uh, 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 addition to the tale. <laughs> and uh, but I, uh, I, uh, so it, 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 it really worked out real well. And uh, as everybody has, has said, he had he had the enthusiasm. It, it isn't just uh, having a, 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 a school principal. But he had he had the ability to uh, utilize the um, uh, printing of, of the books, and, and they made a, a tremendous collection. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else want to share? I'd like to ask who else in the room is or has been a member of the historical society. Several. Ah, yeah. oh, wonderful. So when you see all those hands. That's a testimony to Peter's and Francis's ability to draw people in. Mm -hmm. And you're so, welcome back. Or a twist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many people worked on one of the books? How many people worked on one of the books? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyone else want to say anything? I'm very relieved to hear that I'm not the only one in Georgia who is completely annoyed by Peter. <laughs> we did good work, but he was annoying. Other than Georgia, he sprung out in the Franklin County making the best uh, selecting the best postcard in Franklin County. Hey, and Dutcher's, Dutcher's, Dutcher's Pharmacy. He did the Dutcher's Drug Store in St. Albans. Hmm. <coughs> I probably, well, he also did a vital records book. I, I'm not, yes. I don't see it up there, but I use it a lot. I have it at home when I'm trying to do my genealogy work. I got something else to say. Is <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca Ballard here? Right there. Yeah. Okay. She has a, we have a postcard of the Ballards in their, one of their first cars. And it would be a, a wonderful postcard to be able to look at. And uh, Rebecca, uh, if she isn't in the picture, her parents are. Mm. Wow. And we're blessed enough tonight to have that. That's in this book right here. This is this is a book that if I can get it out. The Georgia Postcard Collection is a gift of Peter and Francis Millett. And it's every Whoa. postcard of the town of Georgia that Whoa. he has collected and donated. So that picture is is in here. Good so. for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that. Oh, you, you just prompted me to get up and say something. All right, I'll finish it now. Um, <clears throat> the first time I met Peter Millet <clears throat> was in either in '59 or '60. Uh, his daughter Laurel and I went to George Elementary School together in 1959 when it opened uh, in 1960. And I'm not sure what year it was, but Laurel had a pajama party uh, at her home and I was uh, one of the girls that uh, was able to spend the evening uh, at Peter's home. What a wonderful host and hostess Peter and Francis <coughs> were and what fun we had. He led us in charades, uh, and I was a very naive girl, I, I guess. One of the things that I drew out was R and R, and I didn't know what he meant by R and R, so I just like stood there, 
could not, how do you make, I don't know what it means. Well, what it was was an abbreviation for rock and roll, and I was just so slow that I did not understand what it was. My thing, I am a director with the Georgia Historical Society, have been for a number of years, and I have to say that the collection of books, uh, materials, both in our museum, in our municipal building, I could spend hours and hours and hours going through all the descriptions of things that you have donated or he has purchased at yard sales, auctions, anything related to the town of Georgia. And we are truly blessed. The maps, he did three of them. 1971, we have 81 and 91 over there. Every 10 years, every person that lived in the town of Georgia is marked on this map. I don't think there's another town that has three maps 10 years apart with every person that lived in this town. The books, um, the Barnes book, I worked on that one and I worked on one of the Memories books. The town histories that he started in 1967 and the last one is 95. We're now recording or put, shall I say gathering everything that happens in our in our town each year but we can't seem to be organized enough to put together a book so to do it from 1967 to 1995 they are cherished things pictures of your families pictures of you pictures of happenings in our town and old history they're, they're, they're just invaluable so, Peter, thank you for all that you've done for us. We really appreciate it. I've got a new challenge for you. <laughs> and that is, in, uh, and, and it's still, there's some of them still standing, and that's the post offices of Georgia, early post offices. How many of you can name one of them? East Georgia. East Georgia, East Georgia. East Georgia. that's West one. Georgia. That's very good. But there are five others, and we've got to identify them and then buy them. <laughs> Well, sure. Yes. <laughs> I'm a visitor to Georgia. I'm from Swanton. I, I'm, uh, my name is Glenn Gerwin, and I just want to tell you a small world story. Uh, and I didn't know Peter and Francis. I moved to Swanton in 1980 from Burlington, where I had been teaching at UBM. And I went to visit my dad in Florida, and I went to a big auction that featured mostly Victrolas and music boxes and similar items, which is my hobby. And I wound up buying something, and sitting next to me was a nice fellow, and he said, oh, why did you buy that? I said, well, I collect that. He said, well, so do I. <laughs> he said, where are you from? I said, Vermont. He said, oh, I have an uncle up in Vermont. <laughs> and, uh, and you should meet him. He's an interesting man. I said, well, that's fine, but... I can't just call up. Well, the introduction was made, and I met Peter and Francis Millet uh, at that time, and that led to, like you all know, a wonderful friendship of almost 40 years, uh, and it led to many other things. I'm now the vice president of the Swanton Historical Society. <laughs> He almost made me do it. <laughs> I was happy just to go to the programs once again. But once I met him, I was sunk, like all of you. Uh, also, in our group, whenever we want to figure out how to organize something, pictures, documents, postcards, plates, how did Peter and Francis do it? I haven't met anybody who figured out a system that's so effective. And I came down to this library and tried to study the pull out file cabinets and the books and lists. 
and I used to visit them, and there was Frances typing away on her own typewriter. She wouldn't do anything more modern. And at our group in Swanton, uh, we have a similar situation. When Peter was your president for so long, I thought, what, what are they going to do when he finally says, I've had enough, or I can't do it anymore? And we've had Ron Kilburn for almost 30 years, and he's almost 80, and he said, I'm getting tired, folks, <laughs> and so I'm, I don't want to be it. <laughs> but, but we're trying to figure out how to go. Uh, in our society, some of our best artifacts were donations from Peter Millett. Oh, I've got this old soda crate, and this old silver pitcher, and these old bottles, and, and he had all this swamp and stuff. And when we wanted to have a postcard collection, he sold us a book this thick of Swan postcards, and everybody who comes to the group says, oh, can we see the Millet collection of postcards? <laughs> it turns out his daughter, Laurel, was in my class at UVM. Okay. <laughs> Graduated in 69, and we never knew each other. But then I helped Francis find things that her daughter wanted. It's just such a small world. Knowing him's made a big difference in my yeah. 40 years since I moved to Swan. Here, here. And so I'm really glad that even though I'm not from here, I share a lot of him with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, Peter, we, we're so glad that you made the trip down tonight. Um, and I know people uh, are aware of all of your things, but... Again, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We love you. Yeah. We have a very special um, cake up here. And I think, if I, I hope you can see, but it's a very special thing at Peter's heart. It's the, the town hall that he loved so much. And it is on the cake. The picture is on the cake. So we we want to get your picture behind that. And I have to tell you, we decided to do this, the historical society directors decided to do this on the cake. I picked the cake up today. We did not discuss what colors to decorate the cake with. I picked it up and I put it in the vehicle and I thought, my gosh, yeah, the colors are green and gold. BFA's colors. That was nothing that was discussed, but it was special for you, apparently. So uh, please come up and uh, and all of you, please enjoy. We have a very large cake. It's it's uh, half chocolate, half vanilla. So if you do not want chocolate or you want vanilla, if you want a little bit of both, there is plenty. And uh, we uh, would want you made you a hand carved plate, wooden wooden plate. It's beautiful. And My beautiful smooth it is. So smooth. But on the back there's a very nice um, inscription presented to Peter Millette, July 19th, 2017. Thanks for so much from the wow. Georgia Historical That's Society. <coughs> this is from a tree. 150 years old from the Wilcox homestead. It's a maple tree. Absolutely appropriate. Thank you. Thank you so much.